Okay, today okay. we're doing okay. similar okay. figures. Okay. I am recording. It says Native Americans of the Northwest carved totem. Okay, let's try this again. Native Americans of the Northwest carved totem poles out of tree trunks. These poles could stand up to 80 feet tall. Totem poles include carvings of animal figures such as bears, eagles, which and, and eagles, which symbolize traits of the family or the clan who built them. Now, measuring the heights of tall objects like some totem poles cannot be done by using a ruler or a yardstick because you're not going to shimmy up the pole and measure it. Okay? You can use indirect measurement to measure how tall something is by using proportions of known lengths to find an unknown length. <coughs> okay, I'll show you what this means. Okay, it says triangle ABC, and what does that symbol mean in the middle? <coughs> Similar to, it's not the same size, but it is the same shape. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle JKL. It says find the unknown measures. Okay, so the unknown measure that we're trying to find is line segment KL. Okay, step one says that you can find X by using your corresponding sides. I know that what side corresponds to AB. JK does. Now remember, if it's not positioned correctly, do you have to visualize it positioned correctly to find your corresponding side? Yeah. So AB, do I know the length of AB? Yep. And do I know the length of JK? Yes. Yes. So what I did is I took corresponding sides that I knew both of the side lengths. Now I'm going to take the corresponding side to the one I want to find, which is what? KL, right? Mm -hmm. I need to put it on the bottom because that's, the bottom is the triangle I'm talking about. The top one is my smaller triangle. What side corresponds with KL? Uh, Good BC does. So this is the proportion I'm going to use. Now I'm going to set it up. Do I know the length of AB? Yes, I do. It is 8. Do I know the length of JK? Yeah. Yep, yeah. it's 28. Do I know BC? Yeah, 12. I'm trying to find KL, so I'm going to put X in for my variable. All right, so to find the length of JK, or sorry, KL, I'm going to go 28 times 12 divided by 8. And you'll find that you get 42, right? So you would say that KL... Line segment KL equals 42, label, centimeters. Do you see how you do that? Um, it be <coughs> yeah, because you go 28 times 12 divided by 8, you get 42. Now, that's not the only thing that we're asked to find, because if you look on here, I have angles and I have side lengths that I'm looking at. I just solved for my missing side length. Notice what else do they have? They have a missing angle measure. What do we know about angles on similar figures? They're the exact same. They are congruent. So well, all I need to do is figure out which angle do I know that corresponds with angle K. What corresponds with angle K? Angle B does. Do I know B? Do I know angle B? Good. Therefore, if I know angle B, which is 103 degrees, I know that angle K will also be 103 degrees. Okay, so the, the rules are, is if your figures are similar, the corresponding angles are the same. If your figures are similar, the corresponding side lengths will be not the same length, but they will be proportional. Okay? All right, let's try another one. All right, here we go. A volleyball court is a rectangle that is similar in shape 
to an Olympic-sized pool. So a volleyball court is similar in shape to an Olympic-sized pool. Find the width of the pool. So I'm wanting this right here. I'm just going to say that this is x. All right. Oh, just kidding. They told us that they want what to stand for the width? W. w which makes sense. W for width. All right. So we need to figure out corresponding sides and set it up. What ratio do I know? Do I know both lengths? Okay, so that's how I'm going to set it up. I'm going to take the length of my smaller one, 18. I'm going to take the length of my bigger one, 50. And now I'm going to set up my widths. Do I know the width of my smaller one? Nine. Do I know the width of my bigger one? No. So, and this is important. You actually have to do two things that you have to line up. I lined up this way, up and down. Both of those numbers are talking about what? The length. So I had to put the lengths together. I had to put the widths together. But I also have to line up horizontally. Both of these numbers are what? It's for the volleyball court, court. Both of these are for the volleyball court. Both of these have to line up because they go to the pool. So do you see when you do proportions, you have to line things up two ways. Vertically, I have my lengths and my widths together. Lengths here, widths here. Horizontally, I have the volleyball information together, and I have the pool information together. You have to do this. Otherwise, it'll be wrong. And then you do cross multiply. 50 times 9 is 450 divided by 18. And you get 25. So therefore, to answer the questions, you the question you would say, the pool is 25 meters wide. Do you see how you take your known lengths to create a proportion to find an unknown length? Okay. Okay, now they're doing the totem pole example. And you can actually do this with anything. I've done this um, at my other school where you can actually find the height of the building without actually measuring it. You stand next to the building. You measure how tall, do you know how tall you are? Can you find that out? Yeah, sure you can. Can you measure your shadow that you're casting? Yeah. Can you measure the building shadow? Yeah. Can you create a proportion to find how tall the building is? Sure, because you know three of the four pieces of information. Yes. That's just like this picture. I'll show you how you do this. Okay, it says estimate the height of the totem pole shown at the right. So we need to do height with height. And then the length of the shadow with the length of the shadow. So we're going to find the totem pole's height, which is H. Do I know how tall the person is? Yes. Five. Do I know the length of the shadow of the totem pole? Yes. Do you see how I'm lining my totem pole information up across the top? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then what's the shadow for the girl? 3.75. Can I use cross multiplication to find out how tall that totem pole is? Yes. Good. I go 15.5 times 5 divided by 3.75. I get H equals, now I have 20, uh, 0.666 repeating, which is 2 thirds, right? 20 and 2 thirds label? Feet. Feet. Good. <laughs> Now, they rounded. They just said 20.66 uh, feet is pretty close to right about 20, 21 feet, right? Uh -huh. And if you actually were to measure that totem pole, it'd be pretty close. Because if you think about it, is the shadow that the totem pole casts going to be at the same angle as the shadow that you cast? Yeah. It is. And so that's what's really interesting about this is the proportions just from using your shadow information and how tall you are, you can find the height of anything. But you have to do it at the same time when you're doing it. Why? What's going to change? Yeah. If you measured your shadow like at 10 o'clock in the morning and then you went back to finish your project like at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, your data is going to be messed up, right? Because your shadow will be different. Good. All right, so if you look at the top, it tells me that triangle XYZ 
is similar to triangle PQR for each pair. So for number one, those are similar. For number two, the triangles are similar. Therefore, all of the angles should be, sorry, the corresponding angles should be, the corresponding angles should be the exact same. The corresponding sides will be proportional. All right, let's look at this. It says find the unknown measures. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at my triangles. Is there anything missing from my first triangle? Are all the angle measures there? Yes. Look carefully. <coughs> angle Y? No. Sure. Angle Z? Yep. Oh, missing angle X. Angle X. So I need to find angle X. That's not there. Am I missing a side length? Um, no. No. Not on the first one. Look on the second one. Am I missing a side length? Yes. Yeah. So I need to find line segment R, Q. I'm also missing angle R, which is referred to as angle B. All right, do you see that? Super important that you label everything. If you just write down your answers, am I going to know whether that number goes with the line segment or the angle? No, you need a label. This is how you label line segments. Remember, you name it according to the endpoints, and then the symbol above it tells me that it is a what? A line segment, right? And then what does the symbol mean right here? Angle, good. All right, let's solve this one. Um, let's do angle R first. Angle R corresponds or is congruent to what angle on my smaller one? Okay, it's Z. Do you see how they're trying to trick you? Yeah. They're rotated weird, right? Mm -hmm. So, Or sometimes they'll even flip them. So you need to really carefully look at it. If you need to, trace it. Rotate it around to see if it lines up correctly. You can also look at your side lengths. It tells us that they are similar. Similar. So this one's my longest, XY. Which one's my longest on this one? PQ is my longest, right? So that means that if I rotate that around, that 12 centimeter piece of XY should line up with my 30 centimeter piece of PQ as long as A is not longer. But if you look at it, is it? No. Okay, so angle R therefore corresponds with angle Z. Therefore, angle B would have to equal what? If angle R corresponds with angle Z, angle B would have to be what? 89 degrees, because that's what angle Z is, right? I'm looking right here. This piece of information is where I'm getting that. All right, I have that one taken care of. I need to find uh, length A, which is line segment RQ. Line segment RQ is proportional to what length? You think it's YZ? Yeah. Because I think we have two things going on. Our original one is rotated and it is also flipped. Okay, so if we flip it down, kind of line it up a little bit, my RQ should be my proportional, sorry, similar to, proportional to YZ. right cuz my 12 would have to flip down to match up with my 30. Okay. Then I'm going to I'm just going to pick I'm going to pick this is what I'm solving for RQ. Do I know YZ? Uh, yes. It's 9. If you can't see it very well look in your textbook it's just pulled right from number 1 on the page 170. <clears throat> I know what YZ is. It is 9. Next, I'm going to pick another pair of corresponding sides that I know. Do I know um, PQ? Yeah, I'm going to put that on top because it goes with the triangle on top that I'm talking about. Do I know XY? That's a corresponding side. It's 12. Now let's solve. 9 times 30 divided by 12. What do I get? Line segment RQ 
equals 22 and a half, label? Centimeters. Centimeters. <clears throat> Let's try another one. Look at number two. I need to find line segment XZ, and I also need to find angle S, which is the same thing as angle Y. Let's do the angle first. <coughs> angle S would have to equal what? What's its corresponding angle on the smaller one? I know it's hard to see. If it's hard to see, look in your textbook. It should be Q. Therefore, it's going to be what angle measure? 58 degrees. Do not f forget to put that label on it. Degrees. Now let's find line segment XZ, which is solving for what Y is. What corresponds with XZ? PR. PR. Do I know it? Okay. Now I'm just going to pick two lengths that I know. One from my, my one on the left and one from my one on the right. So let's just do... I'll do YZ is 64. Corresponding side is what? QR, which is 40. To solve, I'm going to go 64 times 35 divided by 40. Therefore, the length of Y is going to be what? 56 label? Meters. Meters. Okay, now I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes... I don't know if it will be on your assignment or not. Sometimes they will try to trick you. Let's say that this was in centimeters. Would you be able to use that number just the way it is? Why? Do all of your lengths have to be in the same unit? Yes, yes re Bob. Okay? So if they give you a weird unit that's not the same as the other ones, can you convert it before you even start working with it? Yes. Sure. You'd convert your 4,800 centimeters to meters, which is 48. Just going to let you know because sometimes it'll happen. All right. Let's try number three. I know it's cut off, so someone's going to have, what's this length right here? The one that's in the crease of the book, 36. Okay, let's do this one. I want to find, I have a length and I have a width. I'm asked to find the width of the smaller garden. Corresponding sides. This, 42, corresponds with what? Can I just do X? Yes. Okay. Go back to your big one. 54 corresponds to 36. 36. To solve for this, I'm going to go 36 times 42 divided by 54, and I get 28. Therefore, I'm going to say the width, and I'm going to write this in a sentence, the width of the garden is 28, label, feet. All right, let's try the water tower. It says a water tower casts a shadow that is 21 feet long. A tree casts a shadow that is eight feet long. Estimate the height of the water tower. Okay, so what corresponds with my height? Nine and a half, Nine and a half feet. <coughs> what corresponds? Let's see. I'm gonna. I have to go back to the tower. You have to do it the same way every time. Tower to tree. Tower to tree. Good. Shadow twenty one. Tree shadow. Eight. Eight is what it is. Okay. Good. To solve, I'm gonna go twenty one times 9.5 divided by 8. And it just says estimate the height. So I have 24.938, which is really close to what whole number? 25. So I'm going to say the height of the water tower is about 25 feet. Are there any questions on this? If you have questions, make sure you come up and ask me.